Since its development by a Berkeley professor in the early 1900s, the polygraph has been under heavy scrutiny. Polygraph is probably one of the most effective tools in determining if someone's telling the truth or not. It's, it's a sad, sick joke simply because many people's lives, their careers, and even our national security is hanging in the balance over this antiquated uh, last vestige of witchcraft. Despite the controversy, polygraph test results have played a key role in several recent high-profile cases. Susan Smith failed her polygraph and later was found guilty of drowning her two children. Richard Jewell passed his test and later was cleared of any involvement in the Olympic bombing. And O.J. Simpson failed his polygraph. The results were admitted into a civil trial and he was ultimately found responsible for the deaths of his wife, Nicole Simpson, and Ron Goldman. But is this just coincidence, or can a machine actually determine if someone is telling the truth? I spoke to experts on both sides of this issue, and even let myself get hooked up to a polygraph, all to determine if the truth is truly attainable. Polygraphs today are anywhere between 95 and 99 percent effective. D. Moody has been a polygraph examiner for 18 years, having administered over 7,000 tests. She showed me how the polygraph works by reenacting an exam. The polygraph measures basically three different uh, parts of our autonomic nervous system. We measure changes in respiration. We measure changes in uh, pulse rate. We also measure what we call galvanic skin response, which we measure with, by putting a couple of electrodes on the fingers of the individual, and it measures changes in sweat gland activity. When conducting an exam, Dee asks control questions, questions that are not directly related to guilt or innocence, to gauge the subject's normal response levels. Is your first name Sam? Yes. These control questions enable the examiner to accurately evaluate responses to the relevant questions, questions directly related to guilt or innocence. Are you lying on your test today? No. If a subject's reaction to the relevant question is greater than the reaction to the control question, the polygraph will find them to be deceptive. To illustrate how the polygraph gauges responses, Dee showed us the charts from an accused child molester. I had him write me a statement where, wherein he denied all the allegations mm -hmm. regarding these children. So that was the question, did you lie in your written statement? And this is the spike in his galvanic skin response, right. which would tell you that he lied. But just one heightened response does not condemn someone. Polygraphers run three to four charts on each subject, asking the same relevant questions slightly rephrased. I took this gentleman's charts and I ran them through this scoring algorithm and as you can see the results are deception strongly indicated. Seems like hard science, or is it? When the goal becomes to know for sure whether someone has told the truth and when you bring in high technology and manipulative practices, then we have really a very potentially dangerous situation because the fact is there is no reliable way of detecting whether someone is telling the truth or not. What the polygraph actually records in, in scientific terms is what's known as the fight or flight response. It's when your autonomic nervous system processes a shot of adrenaline, causes your breathing to become somewhat erratic, your blood pressure to increase, and your GSR to increase. This does not mean, however, that you have lied. It just means that you have been confronted with some stimuli that elicits this response. This stimuli could be that you have lied, but it could also be nervousness, fear, rage, embarrassment. Doug Williams is a former detective sergeant and polygraph examiner with the Oklahoma City Police Department. One of the many flaws he sees with the polygraph is branding someone a liar based on control questions. Let's compare, for example, the relevant question, did you rape Susie, with the, with the question, can you drive a car? or did you eat breakfast this morning? My problem with that is that there is not any way you can devise a control question that is the same emotional impact as a relevant question. During his 10 years on the force, Doug conducted over 6,000 polygraph exams. He set out to prove to me that the polygraph is not reliable by actually hooking me up to the machine and showing me how to produce a truthful chart. Are you a resident of the United States? Yes. Prior to the exam, Doug taught me breathing and muscle techniques. 
These techniques are known as countermeasures. Have you ever been taught countermeasures? No. That's a bold-faced lie. But according to Doug, I'll still be deemed truthful if my reaction to the next control question is greater than my reaction to the previous lie. Is your first name Michael? Yes. In order to elicit a reaction, I employ the countermeasures Doug taught me. I increase my breathing and tighten my muscles. Let me just show you here what you've done, Michael. As I'm writing here, that's when I'm asking you the question. This yep. is when you answer, and so on. So this okay. is your first question. Do you live resident in the United, United States? States yep. Are you a resident of California? California yep. I think, yeah. Have you ever been taught countermeasures? I lied there. It shows nothing. And then is your first name Michael? Wow. Massive increase. Perfect breathing staircase at the highest GSR. This it's is just an absolutely perfect, beautiful textbook classic chart. I lied during my test, but according to Doug, the polygraph said I told the truth. Most examiners are trained to identify countermeasures, and I've seen it quite often, and when we see countermeasures being implemented, we discontinue the examination process. Which is exactly what Doug wants. Not only do I teach people how to beat it, and I tell those in positions of authority that I'm doing what I'm doing and why I'm doing what I'm doing in hopes that they will quit using them because they know how easy it is to be manipulated. Doug ran me through the polygraph yes. four more times, and each time I was able to produce a, quote, truthful chart. That makes me very skeptical of this machine. As well you should be. It's like the old Tom T. Hall song. If you want to find a thief, you just hang them all and let God sort it out. And that's what the polygraph does. It just hangs them all. As a result of this concern, the Employee Polygraph Protection Act was passed into law in late 1988. The law prohibits private businesses from subjecting yes. their employees to polygraph exams. The Polygraph Protection Act occurred not because the polygraph is flawed or ineffective. It was taken away because it is too effective. And most of our leaders in this country felt that it was too invasive, that it just provided the potential employer with too much personal information about the individual. However, polygraphs are still used in law enforcement and governmental agencies. It's a very good confession getter. It's a very good psychological billy club. It's something that you can use to coerce a person into confessing and divulging all sorts of information, but it still does not detect deception because they're still based on the same false theory that there is a reaction that indicates deception and there is no scientific evidence to support that theory. No. People who offer high-tech solutions, all kinds of fancy gizmos that promise a way to give you the answer, that's a very appealing promise to be able to make. But they're dead wrong. There's little debate that the polygraph effectively measures increases in heart rate, breathing, and perspiration, and that these increases may occur when someone is lying. But does it prove 95 to 99 percent of the time that someone is being deceptive? In my experience, not even close.